state. I've been traveling around the state, working with these groups, talking to these people. And um, I think, the, I certainly understand the frustration that Denise has because hers is not the only RICO lawsuit against Sam Olins. And you were talking about um, being nice and asking uh, uh, in a polite way, and that's what I tell everybody too, and I think that's a very important point. I also agree with you when you're saying we are really the issue. We need to hold them accountable. We cannot count on Sam Olins to do it. And quite honestly, and I don't mind saying this very bluntly because I can prove it. Everything that I say, I prove with documentation. I'm an accountant, not a lawyer, but I document everything. And um, Sam Olins is not enforcing the law. I file an open records request on the AG's office to find out how many open records complaints they receive. And uh, of course, they put me off, put me off, put me off. That's an interesting request. Yeah. Really. And Stephen, <laughs> when I kept pushing Stephen, he said, well, I didn't realize that was an open records request. I said, Stephen, let me put it in a different form for you and send it back to him. So do you know, and this actually surprised me, you know, I get complaints from people every day saying, they're not giving me this, what do I do about that? But um, Stephen said they average six complaints per day. And do you know how much, and you do know, um, that they have taken zero enforcement action on any open records violation since Owens has been in office, zero. And Nydia Tisdale, I love her to death. I am so glad somebody's standing up for her because what they did to her was wrong. But she is, it, you know, having someone pulled out of a meeting is nothing compared to what's going on. If you look at what Gary is dealing with with the Cobb Race Stadium and what occurred there, Roy, what they did with the Paulding Airport. You look at my lawsuit um, in Gwinnett County, you talk about being nice. Actually, I've gotten along great with all of these people that I've sued in Gwinnett. I was having lunch with Shirley Lasseter at Magnolia Cafe before the FBI got her. We had a very nice <laughs> time. She's in the bed pen now. Um, I've been in Kevin Carley's house, beautiful home that he built with his million dollar brides that he only had to pay a $10,000 fine for. Um, Charlotte Nash and I get along just great. We were joking about my broken leg the other day. I sat around Tommy Hunter's dining room table fighting with somebody over an open record. They wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you handed me that. But um, the Attorney General was the one who encouraged me to file my open records lawsuit in Gwinnett because they said, and I believed them, I was so naive at the time, they said that there, we're getting so many violations of open records all across the state, your lawsuit will be precedent setting, and we think we can use that as a hammer against all of these violations across the state. So Sabrina stupidly spends a couple years my life, thousands of dollars, and it would make the hair on the back of your neck stand up if you sat down and read what occurred in my lawsuit. And Sam Olins took direct action to undermine my lawsuit, and I can show you that. And it's not just my lawsuit. Ask Roy, ask Gary, ask all of these watchdogs all across the state what Sam Olins has done. Not just that he didn't provide assistance, because he can say, well, we don't have the budget, we just that and the other. That's what he directly did, such as what he did to Denise, such as what he did at Georgia Primer College. There's still $9 million missing and unaccounted for at Georgia Primer College that has never been investigated by anybody. So we're not talking about did they give it to me in three days or four days? I'm nice about that. If they run a little late, I don't care. But I'm talking about criminal activity that's occurring in the state of Georgia. And you're saying, well, the DAs won't get involved in open records, open meetings, whatever. DAs are not getting involved in a lot of things. And Attorney General Olins is allowing a lot of this to go on. So my question is, in situations like that, then what is our next step? I'm nice as I can be to right. these folks. First of all, let me, let me say you're not going to get any of us to defend government. Um, well, secondly, the only thing at all that would disagree with what you said is somebody did investigate the Georgia perimeter situation. It's a young man by the name of David Schick. Right, I know. And if y'all don't know about the work that, that, that David did, yes. the, the fact is that's what it takes is somebody exposing it. Now, David has not righted the wrong, right. but he has shined the light. And, and it is, and it, it is. Why, why hadn't the Attorney General stepped in then once you see the wrong? Well, that's I, the question I think you're right now. Well, again, uh, the, and the, in fact, the AG 
let, I think, the citizens of Georgia and David down during, yes. during court proceedings. While that, and, and that thing's still not settled. But it can't just be those landmark cases in order to, to change the mindset. What I'm telling you is not the quick answer. What I'm telling you is the big picture. And the big picture is that what you're doing may be the right thing, but as many of you as are in this room, when compared to the communities and to the number of citizens in the state of Georgia, it pales. It's only a very few. I don't know your relationships with your local media, but you've got to foster and build those relationships. We try. And I agree with you. And, I, and I've told you already, there are too many newspapers that are not doing any watchdogging whatsoever, nor do they want to. They might lose advertising. I had uh, a telegraph reporter in my home at Ashford Chase Court say to me, to my face, I cannot do this story because the, and I won't repeat the name, is worried about losing the advertising. Right. Now, I'm going to, for all of you newspaper people in the room, I will tell you something. And I do not. I, I, I'm not saying this in any way to uh, tell you that it has anything to do with the motivations behind open government advocacy. But I will tell you this, for those of you that have the ear of your publisher or the owner of your newspaper chain, open government sells. Yeah. Yeah. Open government drives readership. <laughs> Transparency advocacy will grow the newspaper quicker than anything that you could do. Jim, you, you said I almost at the start, that we are the problem, that, that the people are allowing this and so we are the problem. Well, now we're sitting here four weeks ahead of Sam Olin's running for office again. Why are all the newspaper people not taking notes on this and doing everything you can now to publish, to get the people back in the game and let them see that a slick politician has been there for a while and maybe it's better the, the fool we don't know than the one we do. If I can just make one comment Amen. to follow up with well, that. Are we going to do that? When it did make the news that Sam Owens was fined $10,000 for withholding evidence in the Stacey Calderman Ethics Commission lawsuit, um, Friday before last, another attorney in DeKalb Superior Court filed another motion for sanctions against Sam Owens for exactly the same thing in a different lawsuit. I've not seen that reported anywhere. And I think that's news if he's done it again. And of course, uh, the we'll same thing has happened with Denise. I haven't seen that. But he's done the exact same thing again. And um, the investigation at Georgia Perimeter College was not the only one that he didn't investigate. There are other issues that he has not investigated across the state of Georgia, too. Right. And I will tell you, it's almost as if, and I'm just going to say this about the coming case, and I want to get some more from the other panel members here. It was almost as if the coming case was just too easy. You know, it, it gave a chance to beat the drum. You've been talking to people in the AG's office. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in the you, AG's office is not happy with all of this. Don't, yeah. don't you think it's strange that that case was filed two years ago and it came out right for right election during the election time? Season. How and interesting was yeah, that? And I, it's the only case yeah. that he ever filed in four years. Yeah, you're preaching the choir on that one. Okay, let, let, let me let me get.